Hello, friends. I know. I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, where has this dude been? You haven't posted any vlogs. You haven't posted any tutorials or anything. And as much as I'd love to talk about, like, how busy I've been and, like, doing prelims and all this stuff, um, I'm sure y'all just want to learn and continue these nothing but wonderful lectures. Am I right? So we're just going to continue problem 4.1, we're on chapter 4, doing some actual mass balance from Richard Felder's Chemical Process Analysis, 4th edition. I really hope I do not get sued over this. I'm just trying to like help students understand these problems. Okay, so water enters a 2 meter cube tank at a rate of 6 kilograms per second and withdrawn at a rate of 3 kilograms per second. The tank is initially half full. So is this pro process continuous batch or semi-batch, transient or steady state? Write a mass balance for the process and identify the terms of the general balance equation present in your equation and state the reason for omitting any terms. And how long will the tank take to overflow? It's a bit of a tongue twister. So as usual, try this by yourself first and see how far you get. As you can see, I'm doing some PowerPoints. Uh, I'm trying to change things up a bit. I'm trying to see what works best for me. Uh, but more importantly, what, be what, what do you think works best for you? Do you guys like the PowerPoints? Do you like the Khan Academy style uh, digital board? Or do you just want a good old fashioned whiteboard um, or pen and paper? And for me, you know, I like doing that stuff, but it was just very time consuming. I'd rather just prepare a lecture beforehand so I don't have to do any editing. But please let me know what you prefer. Please give me comments on my teaching style. I really want to better myself um, because I'm going to be um, teaching classes and and just practice for myself. So um, please let me know what what you really like. And um, yeah, in the meantime, this is just for me for fun and for y'all to kind of um, have some extra practice problems in case you're stuck in your homework or you're studying for your midterms. Anyway, enough diddle daddle, enough dilly dallying. Let's just get on with this. Did you try it out? That's what I'm kind of killing time for. You can pause the video, right? All right, so what I like to do is start off by drawing a diagram. So as you can see, here's my tank. And I drew the water initially half full, right? So it's half full. And water is entering uh, the tank at 2 meters cubed per second and leaving. Um, no, it's 6 kilograms per second entering and 3 kilograms per second leaving. So what it asks for first is all this stuff. And I know I didn't go too much into the theory, but this class isn't really very heavily focused on the theory. So we're just going to be focusing on problems. And I'm really a big advocate for solving problems. And just practice makes perfect because, in my opinion, that's a very efficient way of learning. And so, even if I don't go too much into the theory, we're going to describe it right now. So, um, that's why I really recommend you to do a ton of practice problems. So, continuous, I really don't know another word to describe it other than the word itself, continuous. It's just the water is entering, and in this case, the water is also leaving. It's just continuous, you know? Whereas batch, think of like a batch of cookies. You put the, you put the crap in, in the oven, you wait a while... And you let it do its thing, maybe it's reacting, maybe it's mixing, um, and you just take the stuff out. So that's that's batch. Um, for the processes, so transient process is one that is changing with respect to time. So in other words, it's a differential equation that you can write to describe some quantity changing with respect to time. Okay? Whereas steady state is where it is not transient, it is not changing with respect to time. So in other words, the, the time derivative is zero, okay? So this is very useful because we're going to be making a lot of assumptions for steady state. So keep this guy in mind. But in this case, what do you think it is? Is it continuous, batch, semi-batch? Honestly, to be completely honest with you, I rarely see any semi-batch. Um, it, it, it really depends on your assumptions. Uh, a couple times in the lab, I have seen a couple of semi-batch um, um, systems, but just focus on continuous and batch for now. Okay. So in this case, it, it is continuous because the water is entering and leaving. Okay, it's not a batch system. And don't assume right away that it's steady state, okay? Um, I apologize if that confused you. It is not steady state in this case. I just wanted to make this point that we're going to be using this a lot. Okay, in this case, it is in fact transient. Because if you can imagine, transient means that there's accumulation. So can you imagine that the water level in the system is rising with respect to time? Okay, that's very important. Okay? So, B, write a mass... Yeah, that's the answer. Continuous and transient. What do you want? 
write that down. <laughs> so write a mass balance for the process, okay? So I have a couple of videos on the mass balance, and uh, if you want to go ahead and check those out, I'm gonna make a ton of videos on mass balance. Identify the terms of the general balance equation present in your equation and state the read. Okay, so before we do that, I'm gonna start by labeling the system. So we have m dot n, okay? So remember that the dot on top represents that this is a rate. So m dot is mass per time, so kilograms per second, mass per time. And the, the rate in is 6 kilograms per second, and the rate out is 3 kilograms per second. So m dot out, and so m dot, say so the same variable, different subscript. So the subscript is, this is the inflow, this is the outflow. And the initial volume, the, to, the total volume of the tank is 2 meters cubed, but the initial volume is half of that, so that's just simply 1 meters cubed. Okay, so now we can write our mass balance equation. When in doubt, accumul accumulation equals in minus out, plus generation minus consumption. Okay. I think I said this before, I'm not a big advocate for memorizing, but if you're going to memorize one equation, memorize this bad boy. Like, I I'm low-key thinking about getting a tattoo of this because this is just, it's just everywhere in undergrad chemical engineering because it's just, you can write mass balances, energy balances, you can use this to calculate finances, um, even calories, like calories of how much you're eating and working out. It's just, it's just everywhere. I'm, it's, don't even get me started. Okay, so when in doubt, accumulation equals a minus out. Um, in this case, generation and consumption, remember it describes whatever's in the system, and there really isn't anything changing within the system, so we're going to neglect that and let's say this is due to no reaction. Okay, accumulation, don't cross that out yet, you know, I know you guys like to cross things out, but don't cross that out yet, because remember, it is transient, it is not steady state, okay? So, when in doubt, accumulation equals a minus out. So this is your main Bay equation, like, box this, put this on your cheat sheet, just memorize, just, like I said, don't memorize it, just, like, understand it. It's accumulation equals N minus out, okay? It's just whatever is entering the system minus whatever is leaving the system, okay? So, how long will the tank take to overflow? So now we can actually write a balance to describe and quantify the system itself. So, when we wrote our uh, equation, there's two ways of solving it. First, I'm going to show you the easy, I don't like the word easy, I'm going to show you a logical way so you can get a feel for what's going on. And uh, so in other words, this is what I would do, just um, thinking about how to solve it. But but the proper way, um, namely the calculus way, is by writing a differential equation. So if you, if you haven't taken uh, differential equations, don't worry too much about it, but you will definitely see more diffeqs later in classes like in fluids or kinetics. And... You know, even though you won't really need it in this class, probably not. Um, but if you see it now, it will probably help you later on um, when you do see those classes, because you will definitely need some diff EQs, especially if you see, like, Navier Stokes or writing some, like, um, CSTR equations of kinetics. So I challenge you to, to check out the second half of this uh, solution. Okay, so the, the logical way. I shouldn't have wrote easy, because, you know, what's easy for some people may be extremely challenging for others. So... Um, this is more of the logical way. So, like we said, accumulation equals n minus out. So we can just sub in these constants, right? We can just assume that the flow rate in is constant. 6 kilograms minus 3 kilograms. Just simply 3 kilograms per second. So the accumulation is 3 kilograms per second. Okay? So now, think about this. What the, think about what this means. So, it, it's accumulating, right? So, again, imagine that the water is rising. This means that every second, per second, 3 kilograms of water is accumulating in the system. So if you start the timer, there's going to be no water entering and no water leaving. But after one second, there's going to be a net of six minus three, three, a net of three kilograms that have accumulated in the system. And after two seconds, there will be six and after three and so on and so on. So after a certain point, it's going to fill up to the top. Okay. So to solve for time, right? It's the accumulation. It's just the net addition of whatever is going on. So to solve for time, we just need to solve for the volume of space left within the reactor, which is simply the total minus whatever is initially started, which in this case is simply one meters cubed, right? And we can convert this to mass, right? Because we have this in terms of mass. So if density equals mass over volume, the mass is density times volume. We have the mass of space to be filled of water is a thousand kilograms. So all we have to do is simply do some unit 
uh, just playing around with the units, you know? A thousand kilograms and three kilograms per second. Well, you just simply... I shouldn't say simply. I'm, I, I'm sorry. You just take a thousand kilograms, divide it by three kilograms per second. You can see that the units are going to be uh, canceling out. So in other words, I wrote this little equation here. You can, the, the rate is three kilograms per second. The accumulation is the mass per time, right? Mass per time, mass per time. So if you divide 1,000 over 3, you're going to get 300 seconds or approximately 6 minutes, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to show you the, the differential equation. And so, again, if you haven't taken a diff -EQ class, don't worry too much, but um, you need to write some boundary conditions, or really in this case, you need to write some initial conditions. So um, at t equals zero, the volume is at the initial volume, right? At the initial time, the volume is at the, is at the initial volume. Make sense? At the final time, the volume is at the final volume, right? So we wrote that the accumulation is three kilograms per second, but really you can think of accumulation an equation for accumulation is dm dt. So you write the change in mass with respect to time is equal to 3 kilograms per second. So now this is our differential equation that we're going to solve. And the way you do that is, uh, well, this is called separable. So you can separate the differential by multiplying it sort of algebraically. And now we have this differential equation. Now we have to integrate both sides, right? So again, our boundary conditions. We need one for time, and we need one for the mass. So at the initial time, it's t equals zero, and at the final time, it's t equals the final time, which this is what we're trying to solve for. At the initial time, the mass is at the initial mass, okay? And at the final time, the mass is at the final uh, mass, okay? So we can solve for these. But first, we have to integrate. So just like in calculus, you integrate your bounds from your initial to final. And the integral of d whatever, remember, just from calculus, the integral of dx is just x. And you plug in your bounds. So in this case, I'm just going to subtract the final mass minus the initial mass and the final time minus the initial time. In this case, it's just 0. So the time, t0, just goes away. So m final minus m initial is equal to 3t, right? So we need to solve for these guys, and then we can solve for t. So the final time, the final mass, excuse me, is going to be the density times the final volume, and the initial mass is going to be the density times the initial volume, which we have these, right? Or we can just uh, write the equation in terms of the variables, which I like to do, and we can solve for time, just doing a bit of algebra, dividing over, and we have t is equal to rho, the density, times the final volume minus the initial volume, divided by 3 kilograms per second. You plug this guy in, and uh, this is our answer. In fact, I just copied and pasted the same slide. As you can see, it's the same exact answer. Does it make sense a little bit? It's pretty cool how there's two ways of solving the same problem. It's funny how math works that way. So as a little TLDR, we talked about, you know, continuous and batch processes. Um, <clears throat> and we talked about steady state, which we're going to be using this a lot. And remember, when in doubt, accumulation equals in minus out. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I have a little surprise for you. Forgot to mention in the beginning, but you can click the link to get to the slides. I will post these slides so you can just look at the slides. Um, I'll be doing that from now on if I ever do PowerPoints. You can also click the other link to get to my website. Uh, make sure you get to the playlist if you're not already on it. And please, like I said, leave a comment um, describing any recommendations or please any just comments on on my teaching style um i try to be informal um on youtube because um i know you all see a bunch of videos and i just want to be a little bit more lively than the rest of y'all okay so that's it for the video i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching don't forget to share this with your friends family and your dog